going on guys? Shane here. Today we're talking about the flicker jab and why it's such an important punch, but also going to be talking about variations and ways that you can take the concept behind the flicker jab and use it in all of your punches and all of your strikes. Let's take a look. Alright, so whether you heard about the flicker jab from the boxing anime Hajime no Ippo or just read about it online, it's a very important punch, it's a very important concept. We're going to talk about how to do it first and then we'll walk into the benefits and then we'll talk about variations and uh, the function behind these shots, you know, what its objective, what its goal is, what you can achieve with this punch. So uh, let's talk about how to do it first. So I like to break down every single one of my strikes and when I'm throwing them in my mind into three separate parts. You got the extension, then you got the point of impact. So I'm already there. This is the, the stick as I like to call it. And then you got the retraction, pulling it back, right? And you, I, the reason why I like thinking about it in these three separate parts is because I want to make sure I finish the the strike in full, right? If I just extend it, which is what most people think, or they think about like just hitting the target, then they'll end up here and they'll loop the shot, they're worried about their next shot, and they get countered, all right? So in order to, to make sure that we avoid a lazy retraction and that our defense, our passive defense is tight, then I wanna focus on the retraction. But if I wanna focus on conserving energy, I wanna focus on having a powerful punch, or I want that flicker jab, then the most important part of this three-step process is number two, is the point of impact, okay? Why? Because if I throw, if I, want to, if I want to punch through a board, right, like traditional board breaking in Taekwondo or karate, I have to make sure that I have a very powerful point of impact, a very powerful stick, a very powerful follow through, right? Because if I just hit the target and I pull back, I'm not gonna break it, right? I'm gonna do more damage to my hand, I'm not gonna break the board. I want to bang, follow through, and that's when you see all the muscles in the forearm, in the shoulder, tricep, lat, pour, tighten up. It's right at that moment, oftentimes they go and they hang out here and they wait here a second, even after the board is broken, and it's just to make sure that they've fully committed that they've gone through that board, right? And I like to think about it like if someone were throw a photographer and they're taking a picture of me and I kind of want to like hold it, bang, right at that shot, bang, right at that shot, I want the perfect form, that's the one that's going in the magazine, that's the one that's going online, then I want to look uh, absolutely perfect in that position. So I think about it a bit like that, that key point. Now, this can create a bad habit of making you fight like a robot or just focusing too much on technique to where you're, you're fighting or you're, you're, you're training and you're just kind of like, hmm, 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 hmm. I don't want that. What you need to do now is you need to minimize number two. You need to minimize that point of contact depending upon what your goal is. If you're trying to really just do a ton of damage, you know the punch is going to land. Maybe for some reason you have a free shot. Bang, then I'm really going to lock out. And someone you can watch do this is Golovkin. Oftentimes he'll hit them, bang and it just looks like it thuds, crashes into them, and it's like a, there's a moment where it freezes, where that punch, the knuckles land right on its target, stings them, and the fight's over. But if I want a flicker jab, then number two is minimized almost sometimes entirely, right? And this is what makes it a great punch is because I don't have to overcommit, bang, right? Let's say I'm starting to throw this punch, and I can see for whatever reason I need to pull it back. Maybe I need to pull it back to protect from a, an overhand right or something that's coming, then I can pull it back. If I'm super committed to it, if I'm over committed on it, and, and my weight is now heavy on the lead leg, now I got counter from that overhand right, all right? But if I want that flicker jab, bang, there's no number to it, right? It's the extension and it's the retraction. Huh, huh. Now if I want a little bit more power, then I just leave it out there for a little bit longer, a little bit longer of a point of impact. Bang, 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 right? So that's the way I want you to start thinking about your strikes. Again, don't allow this to cause bad habits. I don't want you to get frozen here. I don't want you to always do this. But the concept of understanding that I can minimize number two. I can get my arm out there and I can be pulling it back sooner or a fraction of a second later, depending on how much of a follow through or a stick or a heavy point of impact that I want, all right? Okay, let's talk about the actual technique in the flicker jab now. You'll notice that when I'm in guard, my wrist is bent. And that's just because I like to keep loose wrists when throwing this punch. It's gonna ensure that I get that whipping of the towel motion. Now, when I get full extension, when I actually make contact, I don't make a fist. I keep my fingers open, but I do have them extended, and that's gonna ensure that I protect the tendons in my hand, I don't hurt myself, and I hurt them when I throw this punch, all right? So I do like keeping my fingers extended when I do this. You'll notice if I turn my hand to the side, I still have that bent wrist, almost like that traditional karate style punch where it protrudes the first two knuckles, but again, I like doing it with an open hand, all right? So again, 
wrists are loose and relaxed. I already have my knuckles facing the target. All right, now I just need to whip it out there, like the towel, get it there as quickly as possible. Ooh, bang. All right, now I keep my fingers extended. I have some tension in the forearm, which is going to protect the wrist and again, extend the fingers there. Uh, thumb hides behind the fingers when I throw this punch. The first two knuckles are likely going to make contact first because of the bent wrist. And then I bring it right back into guard here. Now let's talk about the benefits. The benefits of less, less being more when, when doing the flicker jab, right? If I'm not over committing to it, again, we talked about getting countered, it's harder to time this. It's harder to time the counter because I can, I'm able to pull it back quicker. I'm able to get back to guard sooner to actively defend against incoming shots. I'm not going to be heavy on that leg and I can retract sooner, which means that the punch itself is quicker. Hey, huh, huh, pop, pop, pop. I can double it up, I can triple it up. I can throw five in a row, right? And that's the other nice part is that it doesn't cost a ton of energy to throw this shot, right? I can just throw throughout the entire fight, just be peppering them with these jabs. And that's another expression that you hear is pepper them with jabs, with these flicker jabs, right? These non-committal, nothing too heavy, right? Now you may be thinking like, but it's not doing damage. Yeah, but it's racking up points. It's frustrating them. It's, it's getting a reaction out of them. Now I see how they like to defend. They tend to parry. They tend to slip their head. All right, well now I can fake that flicker jab whoop, and make them run into my left hook. Fake the fl flicker jab, have them run into my lead uppercut. All right, so those are the benefits of using that flicker jab. All right, now the concept of this can be carried over into all different strikes. The right hand, for instance, right? So let's say I, I, I want to just touch them. I just want to see how they react to my right hand. I don't want to overcommit on it. I just want a real quick one. As opposed to really sitting down on the shot, tightening up the abs, for, tighten up the forearm upon impact, really trying to do damage. If that doesn't land, there's more time for them to counter me. There's more time for them to cut an angle on me. I wanna get back into position as quickly as possible. I just wanna see, do they parry my right hand? Do they slip my right hand? Do they step back? Do they try to crash the range and move towards me? I'm just gonna do something like this. Huh, quick, bang, bang, bang. And one thing you may have noticed when I'm throwing these different example punches is that sometimes I'm throwing it from that, like my lead arm would be down here, right? Think about like Mayweather or James Tony would throw this up whip jab or up flicker jab. Sometimes I'm throwing it from my eyebrow and it almost looks like I'm pawing down, coming down, almost like pushing down on the hand or chopping into the punch, almost like Tommy Hearns, Hitman Hearns used to do, right? Or maybe it's a little more of the limp wrist. Looks like I'm whipping a towel, Tyson Fury. I watch him against any of his opponents, but Deontay Wilder, Really, you can see in slow motion how bent his wrist would be as it came out, and then last second he'd flick it out. Really loosen the arm, saves energy, gets real long with it, nice and quick, all right? Or maybe you're shooting it straight down the pipe, right? Very traditional punch, but you're just focused on extension, super quick point of impact or stick, and a super quick retraction. All right, so this is why the concept behind the flicker jab is super important, and it's because of the importance of energy conservation and pacing yourself. Now, if these words don't mean anything to you, it's probably because you haven't been in a three round or a five round fight yet, or sparred for four, five, six rounds in a row where at the end you feel like you were drowning. Uh, but if you've been there before, then I know you'll give me an amen when I say how important energy conservation is. Um, but think about it like this. Let's say you have a three round fight. In the first round, you're doing great. In the second round, you're beating them up, but you're tired going into the third round. If they weathered the storm, now they start picking you apart and they TKO you, it doesn't matter how good you did in the first two, you lost the fight. All right, and I would argue this is one of Floyd Mayweather's best attributes, his ability to recognize his energy levels and fight accordingly, right? Change his output, change the level of power that he's doing on his punches, and think about it, it isn't until the later rounds where he really starts putting some mustard on his right hand. Otherwise, he's just touching him with the jab up high, down low, stabbing to the body, faking low, throwing that lead hook, managing the distance, tying up, right? This is why some people will take a round off and just use those, those flicker jabs, tie up, clinch up, run, right? But it's, again, it's, it's not running, it's strategy. It's part of the fight, all right? So again, no matter what striking art we're talking about, utilize these, these concepts behind the flicker jab, adjust your levels of impact or power, and notice how much it affects your energy levels. All right, you guys, there you have it, the flicker jab. It's easy, whip the tail, whap, all right? So what I want you to do is dedicate an entire round to shadow boxing or heavy bag or sparring where you're just using the flicker jab or the concepts behind the flicker jab with all of your strikes. 
and then take notes how you feel at the end of the round. You probably were able to throw more punches, a higher output, simply because it's an easy punch to throw, right? You're not over committing, you're not sitting down on your shots, you're not tensing up your muscles, you're not wasting your energy, all right? And not every punch has to be that way. Not every punch should be thrown with 100% power because you're not gonna land every single shot. You should only do that with the shots that you know you're gonna land. Otherwise, flick these jabs out there, flick these other shots out there, save your energy, and then you really start to, you know, your takeaway will be understanding energy conservation and pacing yourself throughout a round and throughout the fight. All right? Now, if you're enjoying these more conceptual based videos, then you're gonna love our courses on fighttips.com. Whether you're training solo or with a partner at home, you train at a gym and you're just looking for more extra credit, or you're a coach yourself and you're looking to better organize your curriculum for your students, then fighttips.com is going to be the ultimate resource for you. Check it out. Link's in the description below, and if you have any questions, shoot me an email or just drop a comment down below. Until next time, be sure to subscribe to get the fight tips before your opponent does. I'm Shane with Fight Tips for the Underdogs.